Chris here from Kegworks. Today we're going to show you how to build the ultimate keyser. A keyser is a great alternative to your traditional kegerator. You can customize the look and the beverages you put on tap. Today we're going to customize a 7.1 cubic foot freezer into a keyser. We're going to put beer, wine, and a cocktail on tap, which is going to be a Manhattan. Let's get started. First, we need to plan out a keyser build. So decide how many taps and what size kegs you want to fit inside your keyser. We're going to make a three tap keyser that has room for a sixtal and two two and a half gallon corny kegs. We also need room for a CO2 tank and a nitrogen tank. For us, a 7.1 cubic foot freezer is just enough room. You can refer to our keg size guide when planning out your keyser. Once you purchase the chest freezer, remove the lid. Loosen all the screws on the hinges and lift the lid off the freezer with a partner. Next, measure the top lip of the freezer and purchase wood for the collar. For our collar, we need two 1x6x6 by six by foot pine boards, foam board insulation, corner brackets, screws, wood glue, and liquid nails. Now that we have our supplies, we can start building the collar. Start by measuring and cutting the boards. We use a miter cut to achieve a clean looking corner. Measure and mark where you want to place the taps. We're replacing ours centrally with a three inch spacing. Drill the holes using a one inch hole saw. Next, glue up the boards and allow them to dry. We also added corner brackets later for added strength, but you can construct the collar to your liking. Now sand and finish the collar. You can use any finish you like, just make sure it's waterproof and that you finish all sides of the collar. We did two coats with a light sand in between to achieve a smooth finish. After allowing the finish to dry, you can add corner brackets if you're using them. Next, measure and cut the foam insulation. Install it on the inside of the collar using liquid nails. We left a small section open where we will install a gas distributor. Now we can install the collar. We will be attaching our collar with liquid nails. Apply a bead of liquid nails around the lip of the freezer. With the help of a partner, lower the collar onto the freezer. Replace the lid and place some weight on top to ensure the collar is properly adhered. Allow the collar to dry for a couple days. Once the adhesive is dried, align the lid to the collar and attach the hinges. Drill pilot holes and install screws to secure the lid to the collar. Now that the collar is built and installed, we can install our temperature controller to keep the keyser at the appropriate temperature. We installed ours using one of the screws from the hinge on the back of the freezer. We taped the temperature probe to a bottle of water for better temperature accuracy, but you can tape it to the keg or just let it hang in the freezer. Plug the keyser into the cooling side and then plug the temperature controller into an outlet. Finally, set your temperature controller to the appropriate temperature for your drinks. Most beers pour at 38 degrees. We can now assemble the draft components. Keep in mind these parts will vary depending on your particular build. Here are the parts you'll need. CO2 and nitrogen tank, CO2 and nitrogen regulator, three five foot airline jumpers with screw clamps, gas distribution manifold, Sankey decoupler, two sets of gas and liquid ball locks, five feet of vinyl beer line with stainless steel connectors, two five foot barrier lines with stainless steel connectors for the wine and cocktail taps three 4-inch shanks, stainless steel, perlic faucets, tap handles of your choice, two and a half gallon corny kegs. All these parts can be purchased on kegworks.com. If you need help picking out your parts or have any questions, feel free to call us and we'll be more than happy to help you. We will start by assembling the gas side. Connect the three airlines to the distribution manifold. Next, connect the gas side ball locks to the two air lines coming from the output of the distribution manifold. Then connect the nitrogen regulator to the air line going to the input of the manifold. 
Now attach the nitrogen regulator to the nitrogen tank. Next, attach the remaining airline to the coupler and CO2 regulator. Attach the CO2 regulator to the CO2 tank. Finally, mount your distribution manifold to the inside of the collar. Now your gas side is complete. Now it's time to assemble the beer side. Start by inserting the shanks into the collar and tightening them down. Attach one side of your beer line to the coupler and the other to the first shank, making sure to insert a beer line washer on each side. Take the barrier line and attach the liquid side ball lock into the open end. Attach the other side to the shank, making sure to include a washer. Attach your faucets to the shank using a faucet wrench and add your tap handles. As a finishing touch, attach a drip tray to your keyser. We used magnets to mount ours so we can easily remove it for cleaning. Before tapping your kegs, you'll want to clean your lines, coupler, and faucet to ensure a sanitary system. Once your lines are clean, you can tap your kegs and you're ready to serve beer, wine, and cocktails on tap. Hopefully this video helped you plan out your ultimate keyser. Keep in mind that the specific beverages put on tap are associated with these instructions. Click the link on the screen and go to kegworks.com to get all your dispense needs. Also feel free to comment where you're going to put on tap below. Cheers!